G'day trendsetters, I'm John with Gravel Cyclist and I'm coming to you today with my long-awaited part four video of the Niner MCR9 RDO full suspension gravel bike project build due to supply issues which a lot of you are experiencing. Well, that explained the delay. So, without further delay, a quick update for those who have not seen the first parts, one, two, and three. I covered the frame in detail, the Niner MCR9 RDO, there's also the fork, the Stepcast 32 gravel fork by Fox, and not shown here at the moment is the cockpit parts and one by crank and a few other goodies supplied by my friends at FSA, full speed ahead. All of those videos are linked in the description below. Many humble thanks to all of those entities for participating in this super fun project build. That now brings me to the next part of the build, the wheel set. And here it is, the classified G30 wheel set, which is an interesting alternative to the front derailleur. Now don't panic, I'll unbox the wheel set momentarily real quick. There is more to the classified system than just a wheel set. There are actually three components that tie it all together. There is a wireless handlebar switch that triggers a shift to the smart through axle, which in turn communicates with the power shift hub, which internally contains two gears, if you will. So essentially, you have your physical front one by chain ring, say a 48, and paired with this system, you get a virtual 33 by how the gear ratio changes inside the power shift hub. The ratios, I understand, are going to depend on your big chain ring size. So if you had a 50, for example, that would become a 34 in the virtual second chain ring or small chain ring position in the rear hub. In my case, I have a 44 tooth big chain ring. So I'm hoping it's gonna step down to somewhere between 29 and 30 teeth virtually. I guess we'll find out later on. One other thing, this system relies on a proprietary cassette available in different ratios in 11 speed or 12 speed. And I believe the shifting spacing is geared around trim slash Shimano. Okay, enough claptrap, now it's time to unbox the classifier system, which includes the wheels and the other parts I mentioned earlier and cover the techie features. Okay, time to shift. Here we go. This box here probably contains the power shift hub. I'll open it momentarily. Manual, definitely need to read this manual. And the wheels themselves. Now I know for a fact these wheels have seen a bit of use. They might have visited a certain gravel event in Kansas about a month ago. Here's the front wheel, the classified G30. Now there are 24 straight pull spokes. They are DT Aerolite straight pull to be exact. And on the non-disc side, it's in a one cross pattern. Don't see that too often. Flipping over the front wheel, we have a three cross spoke pattern and the wheel set utilizes a center lock standard, which is really nice if you swap out rotors as often as I do. 12 millimeter through axle. And the hub itself is, let's flip it around, classified. So classified branding there. You can see the straight pull, etc. And I will measure the rims internally with my trusty caliper very soon. There is DT Swiss tape in place to hopefully ensure a tubeless seal. Now, I don't know if this front hub is available in anything other than 12. If it is, I'll overlay it on screen. And you can see the rim here up close. It is a hooked design, which I quite like, I have to say, and a lot of people will like as well. I'll throw this onto the scale shortly. But let's now grab the rear wheel and take a look. And here is the rear wheel, and well, the obvious thing that's unusual about this wheel set is there is no center, so to speak, in this wheel. So the power shift hub can be switched between this wheel set, and if you happen to have another wheel set, this is a very interesting and unique wheel set, putting it mildly. There are 24 spokes again, and on the drive side here, we have a two cross pattern. Flipping it over, to the disc side, center lock once again, and a two cross pattern as well. And the same rim as on the front wheel and the same spokes being DT Aerolite straight pull. Now it's time to open up this rather interesting box and see what is in here. 
particularly this part, the classified power shift hub. This is an interesting collection of parts. So let's begin with the classified power shift hub. I will weigh this on the scale, so don't panic. There is a decent amount of heft here, and there is a cassette sort of mechanism. Let me place it close to the microphone so you can hear it. So that will bolt in, so to speak, to the center of the rear wheel, and I will demonstrate that. Lock ring, that's included. Here is the smart through axle, so to speak. This is the device that receives the signal from the handlebar unit, which I'll show you momentarily, and tells the rear hub to do the actual shifting. So definitely a unique looking piece. And there's also a charging cable, which you don't see that too often, do you, with a through axle. Here is a close up of the smart through axle. Here is a little hatch. Let's make sure that's in focus. So we would remove this, and right there is your USB or micro USB charging port. And there's also an LED which indicates when you shift, green means okay, no worries at all. When it hits red, you've got 20% charge. And I understand according to classifier, that means you have about a thousand shifts remaining. This is interesting. These are lightweight aluminium, aluminum kind of threaded pieces, and there's different lengths. Let's pull a few out of the bag so you can get a closer look. It looks to me like there's at least two different lengths happening here, and there's different, whoops, there's different pictures of threads. Here is the cassette, and I asked for an 11 to 34. It looks like we have an 11 to 34 here. Wow, that looks pretty light. It feels light. One piece monoblock and I believe it's steel of some kind. Let's count those cogs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve cogs in all. Perfect. And I'll overlay the ratios for your viewing pleasure. Inside this bag, this has to be the shifter unit and so on for the handlebar, etc. So let's have a look here. Oh boy, there's a bunch of small parts. So be careful. I do not want to lose all these parts. Let's have a close look. Hopefully that's in focus, let's make sure it is. I'll overlay what this part is. Because also in this package is a battery and it looks like a special tool. This piece here looks to be the switch that activates the shifting. Now that looks very similar, although it's not, to a DI2 sprinter switch. It is branded classified. So that plugs in some. And there's a little, looks like an adapter type piece, I assume for your handlebar. We'll show that during assembly, etc. This is a very unique piece here. Let's remove it from the plastic bag. Again, I'll have to overlay what exactly this part is. And there's a couple of little washers and screws. So I don't want to lose those. Next we have some spaces. And there's a lock ring. Time to weigh the wheel set, front wheel. Don't forget these weights do include a rim strip and valve core. Let's make sure it's in focus. 755 grams. The rear wheel, don't forget, there is no centerpiece yet for the hub, so to speak. 735 grams, so let's just Throw them together for giggles. Make sure they balance. 1,491 grams for the pair. And next, let's weigh the rear hub, the centerpiece, so to speak, of the power shift hub. Stay. 486 grams. Now let's add the smart through axle. 70.5 grams. There's a lock ring required, seven grams. Next, let's grab the cassette with a lock ring as well. 223 grams. Let's throw the switch onto the scale. 
nine grams including the plastic bag. Now let's try and get everything onto the scale, okay? The whole lot to make a complete classified system. Amazing, that's balancing so far. All right, we're at 1,978 grams so far. Is that a cassette with lock ring? If this doesn't topple, I'll be amazed. 2,201 grams, switch. 2,209 grams. How am I gonna balance this smart through axle? Good question. Oh my gosh. This is like playing Jenga. Smart through axle, 2,271 grams. One lock ring. Oh, this is getting spicy. Little stay. 2,278 grams. Switch. Oh yes. 2,287 grams. For the complete classified system, there is, I think, well, there's a couple of parts missing in this bag here, but for the most part, we've got the majority of the system covered, etc. This is the installation procedure for the power shift hub into the center of the wheel, which in itself, I guess, is a hub. So you might notice right there, there are the splines, and the center of the hub has corresponding splines. There's no master spline, so to speak. Slide it in. Okay, it's in place. And then we utilize a lock ring on the non-drive side. And install into the threaded section right there. Now we'll be using grease once I prepare this for actually mounting to the bike. This is just for demo purposes. So catch the thread and then tighten down to 40 newton meters. And that looks to be a standard type cassette tool for Shimano right there for that particular lock ring spline. To install the cassette, simply slide it on let's try and angle it so you can see this and there is a little space there that's important that piece must be in place on top and just pretty much snaps in place and then we'll use another lock ring to bolt the cassette on and that is a standard shimano cassette lock ring tool in this case Time to measure the rims. Let's start with the inside diameter. And it's about 23 millimeters. Outside diameter is about 29.25, close enough. Rim depth, it's measuring at 28 millimeters. This is supposed to be 30 millimeters. So unless I'm measuring wrong, you know, well, these rims are sometimes difficult to measure, but I don't think I'm goofing up here. Let's try and get in camera shot so you can see. I've got the caliper right at the same part of the jaws. 28. So there you go. Okay, that's the techie features covered. Now it's time to see how these wheels mount up with some tubeless tires. It's time out time. Now, I may not end up using this tire or the next one I'm going to show you on these wheels, but this is a Pirelli Cinturato Gravel M. I have reviewed it. You can check it out, linked in the description below. It's a dry mount. There's no seal inside. I do like the orange seal endurance formula. And there's no valve core, so this should be a nice poof, big shot of air from my Bontrager TLR flash charger pump. Here we go. Well, it hasn't made the distinctive pop sound I like to hear, but this tire is definitely in the bead. All right, that was easy. Next tire, Panorama Gravel King SK. Reviewed as well, and this is one of my favorite tires. It's almost my go-to tire, that point aside. Here we go. Well, that was easy as well. It's almost in the bead. There's a few more pounds of pressure, but no problems here. These were really 
easy to set up wheels. Well, they were already set up, I should say, but they didn't require a second layer of tape. Sometimes you need that. That's not a reflection on the wheels themselves. Some of these tires may require one or even two extra layers of tape. That's the sort of noise I'm looking to hear. Oh yes, in the bead, lovely. So there you have it, my part four video of the very special Niner MCR9 RDO full suspension gravel bike project build. That is a mouthful. Stay tuned for part five where I will unleash, unveil the actual components to shift the gears on the rear derailleur and so on for this bike. And finally, once part five has been unveiled, you have the build videos to look forward to, so stay tuned. As always, thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the Gravel Cyclist YouTube channel for interesting content such as this. No bullshit arama gravel bike reviews, other product reviews, ride experience videos, and general madness. No. <laughs> really? <laughs> Indeed, as all of it is released to the channel, I'll see you in the next video.